the last Sunday after the Epiphany. Year B. From Psalm 50. Our God will come and will not keep silence. In the name of our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings for this week all address issues of silence and speech. In our reading from the second book of Kings, everyone seems already to know somehow that Elijah is about to be taken away. So they try to talk to, with Elisha about it, but he cuts them off saying, yes, I know, be silent. Meanwhile, Elijah is trying to cut Elisha off, but Elisha refuses to be left behind. Paul likewise speaks to the Corinthians of times when we will speak, and what we speak will be the gospel, but the gospel will be veiled to those who are perishing. Finally, Jesus orders Peter, James, and John to tell no one about what they'd seen on the mountaintop until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. In other words, sometimes the timetable of communication is being controlled as a matter of tactics somewhere higher in the cosmic scheme of things than the place where we stand. We see this when the question of Elisha's inheritance depends not on what Elijah promises, but on whether God gives Elisha the ability to watch Elijah being taken away. Elisha watches and keeps crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen, because he recognizes that Israel's battles are being fought not only on the earthly level, but also on the cosmic level, where it was somehow necessary that Elijah be taken elsewhere. This all leaves us feeling frustrated with the realization yet again that we can never know as humans whether or to what degree the outcomes that concern us most actually depend on what we ourselves do or say. We like to laugh at Peter, not only because booth building seems silly, but also because we recognize ourselves in him. We ourselves do all sorts of things, make tea, talk sports, not because we believe they will change higher realities, but because we want to reassure someone that they're not alone in their helpless confrontation of matters that are all too often beyond their control. Let us therefore wear our ashes this Wednesday, not in order to proclaim ourselves, but in order to proclaim Jesus as Lord and ourselves as slaves of one another for Jesus' sake. Let us reassure one another by our actions that none of us is alone in our helpless confrontation of our own sinfulness. Let us bow together in that covenant of mercy which has been sealed with the self-sacrifice of Jesus Christ before God, our God, who will not keep silence, but instead, in the timing that is above and beyond all human knowing, will indeed call the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. In the name of that God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 